I was born here in this house and I will die in this house. This is home. Place is very important. Living here in Santa Fe, I'm very much aware of how my ancestors were treated. The mountains witnessed that, as did the rivers, as did the land. Those experiences are experiences that stay with us. Those things are embedded in our culture, in our communities, so deeply that we probably don't think about them consciously. We're always aware of you know, where we come from, the effects colonialism has had on our communities. And these objects are part of that uh, witness. They witnessed that trauma. When the family is threatened, as it has been in the colonial era through impoverishment and residential school systems, boarding school systems, and all sorts of colonial impositions, the relationships become all the more important. I believe in blood memory. I believe we, we pass on that blood memory to our next generations. And I will always, always believe in our oral traditions. Because no matter what, from a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, and a thousand years into the future, we will always have our voices. I'm very interested in deep space, like the cosmos and stars, because that's a scientific vocabulary that indigenous people in the Americas have had. But I think everybody thinks we're just out collecting nuts and berries and that's it. Not that our cultures are based in really deep science. You can definitely feel it when you're creating art, especially when it's bigger and better than you, you feel like anything that you could have created. You feel touched by, um, you know, maybe ancestors guiding you. Our art history is our history. This is how our ancestors speak to us, and we still use these symbols, so you'll see this ongoing renewal and this ongoing connection. A lot of people want to know how long it takes. We don't really like that question. My answer now is it takes a thousand years, and what that means to me is that my ancestors had to figure out what was going to work, and then try it. It is a seven generation dress because it's not only the three of us sitting here, but it is, you know, Grandma Josephine and Grandpa Greyhawk. To recognize the love we have within our relationships and our family and the power behind that. I hope people feel that, the amount of love and honor we carry for each other. I'm thinking about all of that cultural knowledge that's embedded in that. It's more than just making something beautiful. It's sort of how we apply the way we move through the world um, to everything that we do. And so aesthetics isn't just, oh, that's pretty and we put it on the wall. Aesthetics reminds you how to be in the world. The entire experience of indigenous peoples could be recognized as an aesthetic art practice. If she's not beating, she's, she gets grumpy. <laughs> you know, it's like we all do. <laughs> yeah. So she she has to beat every day. She does. I mean, it's just part of her. That's who she is. For Pueblo people, you know, that's our mother. Clay, dirt, adobe. It's all very much um, a relationship with our mother. Harvesting is the most important part of um, the whole relationship of what we have, of what we do. It's our connection to the earth. It's where the teaching starts. It's not just about a beautiful basket. It's about everything that goes with it. I come from two different worlds, uh, a Western world and an uh, indigenous world. And I was always watching the miscommunication or the frustration both sides were having and finding out that through my artwork, because it was emotional based, I had found a language that crossed all racial barriers, all cultural barriers. It became a common human language that we all speak. In my experience, we um, are one of the most unified groups of women artists uh, in the world, and we all um, celebrate and love each other.